There's this SFM video that's basically a VeggieTales song reanimated with TF2 characters, and the concept of mixing TF2 and VeggieTales was a beautiful one ever since then. But nobody's ever used it again. Then they did this. And it's in this VR game with guns and hot dogs. I'm gonna be honest, I thought this update was gonna be a bust. I don't even trust Valve with TF2 anymore. Definitely not some tiny dev studio. The amount of perfection I see in this title cannot be matched by some VR games, so I expected shit. But what I wasn't expecting was a real fan and admirer of TF2 to be the one behind this, and I know he is one because it's obvious when you're playing. This guy, I believe his name is Anton Sugar, did an amazing job bringing the weapons to life. But even more than that, he let you actually have fun. When I heard this was going to be single player only with AI game modes and pretty much nothing else, I was worried. I expected this to be one of those games where you go shoot guns for a little bit, and then you run out of ammo and you die, so you do it again. And if that's what you like, then you can do that. But this game lets you do whatever the fuck you want. My first time playing, I went in with some basic weapons, and it was cool. But it was much more fun when I started to get crafty with loadout. Soon enough, I was doing the rocket jumping spy thing, like Musa. Got him! <laughs> Soon I discovered that they forgot to limit the amount of sticky bombs that you can have placed at once, which lets you go to fucking space. They didn't limit you at all, and that's why this is best offline. It's not balanced to be competitive like TF2, but this gameplay still perfectly captures what I believe to be the spirit of TF2 in a way that we don't ever get to see too often, and that's just in the gameplay. When I compare this to VeggieTales, I mean it. The hot dog classes, they have these voice lines that are voiced kind of like the fucking broccoli guys, they're all kind of high-pitched. Why don't you wrap yourself in tin foil and jump into the microwave? And they all make little subtle references in each line that only true fans will understand. Republish- oh, no! <laughs> I mean, it's not perfect. Whoever made this map layout is an asshole. And you move slow as hell without the blast jumping, and some guns are simply better than others due to damage and ease of reloading. And the fact that one is a literal rocket launch, some guns work weirdly and a few details are off. Like how you pull the gun up to do the lever on Scout's scatter gun when the scout clearly pulls it down, which also makes more logical sense. The sniper rifle only chambers one bullet at a time. I don't know what the hell is going on with Spy's knife. The syringe gun has an inexplicable muzzle flash, the pyro didn't get an air blast, and the previously mentioned lack of sticky bomb limitations. But I'm sure they're all like that for good logical reasons, and they don't really make a difference, so whatever. The game is fun as hell, the possibilities are limited technically, but there's a lot of them. And I don't want to talk anymore, I just want to go play it.